You're thinking of moving to Somerville and you're not really sure what you're getting yourself into. And in today's video, I'm gonna share what I wish I knew before I moved to the Somerville area. My name is Sage Jankwitz. I'm a real estate agent. I have closed over 300 transactions in the last three years in and around Somerville in Cambridge, Massachusetts. I've lived in and around Somerville for around the last 10 years. Before we get into the video though, please take a second, subscribe, hit that bell icon so you can get more content. I'm planning on putting out a lot of things both about Somerville in Cambridge in general, and also real estate and real estate investing in this area in particular. The first thing that I didn't really realize before I moved to Somerville is Somerville is comprised of squares. There is Ball Square, there is Teal Square, there is Davis Square, there is Porter Square, there is Assembly Square, there is Magoon Square. There are a lot of squares that make up Somerville. So the best way, in my opinion, to really understand what Somerville is all about is understand your squares. So you got to write them all down, spend a day or two, and just go to the different squares, walk around, go to a coffee shop, get a little bite, walk down some of the side streets. They all have their own sort of unique vibes. Some are a little less expensive. Some are a little more happening. Some have more new construction. Some have more older construction. And obviously you need to factor in some other things in your personal situation, but do the square thing early and that will help you understand where you want to target. And you're going to save yourself a lot of time as opposed to looking at properties and you say, oh, the property's awesome, but it's not really where I want to be. So that's the first thing. Really learn your squares, write them down, take some time. Take a couple days, that's all it takes. You really don't need that much time. It's a very small area. We're talking four miles for all of Somerville. Number two, parking. This is a real shocker and was definitely a shocker to me when I moved to Somerville, but there's a lot you need to know about the parking situation in Somerville. It is not the same as it would be in a Dallas, Texas, or in a Los Angeles, California, or in a lot of other parts of the country. Parking is very limited. Parking in Somerville is a premium. You are gonna pay generally more for an off-street spot and much more for a garage spot. And oftentimes, you may find your dream place and it may have no parking. So that's the first thing you need to know about parking. You need to understand that parking tickets, you're very likely to get them. So another piece of advice, understand how parking works in Somerville. And what I mean by that is a few things. There's a permit process. You need to change your insurance. A lot of people say they don't want to change their insurance. You really kind of have to do this if you're planning on parking on street to get the permit. So you need to just kind of suck it up, go through the process. You're going to update your insurance. Your insurance, good chance is going to go up. It's something that you really, really have to do. Now, keep in mind, most people in Somerville don't own a car. They walk to work. They take the subway to work, which is also known as the T, or they bike to work. So you might consider doing that too. It will save you a lot of headaches and save you some time and money. And it's also good for the environment. So it's another thing that you might want to seriously consider doing. And then finally, parking tickets, you're probably going to get them. Street sweeping is a big thing here. Not every place in the country has this whole street sweeping thing, but it's a really big thing here. It's for part of the year. If you don't move your cars every other week, you're going to get a ticket or you're going to get towed. It's not a fun experience. A lot of people who move here have no idea what it's about. So learn about it. If you have questions, you can ask me about it, but you really want to educate yourself before you get here. So you're actually prepared for what you're getting into. Next one. This is a pretty cool one. Not a secret, but if you didn't know about this, no one's going to tell you about it. So you kind of really need to make sure you know about this, which is the Somerville residential exemption. So for all these people watching who are thinking of maybe buying a condo or a multifamily or a single and living in the property, there is a residential exemption in the city of Somerville. So what does this mean? The city of Somerville wants more owner occupants. They don't want it to only be investors here. That makes sense. The more people who actually live here and own here, they're going to take better care of their units. They're going to invest in the community. It's a good thing. So they're trying to encourage that sort of behavior with this residential exemption. So the way it works is you get a 35% reduction on your assessed value. So what does that mean? The city every so often will assess the value of your property. Let's say you have a million dollar property. If you have a million dollar property with the residential exemption, in the eyes of Somerville, they'll see it as a $750,000 property. So then they have a tax rate and they'll apply that rate based off of the $750,000 instead of a million dollars. Generally speaking, you're usually saving three to 4K a year, which is a lot of money. Sometimes like, there's a bit of a range there, but roughly somewhere in that zone is usually where I see it end, ending up. But one other key point here, the way the residential exemption works is you have to be living as an owner occupant in the property the previous January 1st. So for example, in 2023, if you wanted to get the residential exemption, you would need to be living as an owner occupant closed on the property completely January 1st of 2022. So that's another piece that you need to realize. It's a great benefit, but a lot of people who do understand this don't realize is that oftentimes it's going to be a year or two before it starts taking effect. So just be aware of that. There's certain forms you have to fill out. Again, you can ask me. I'm happy to help walk you through it. But really huge benefit and things I wish I knew about Somerville before I moved here, I had no idea about. Number four, and this is a really big one. It's something that isn't really talked about a lot. It always blows my mind. I mean, there is a piece of this that I'm about to share that people talk about, but I kind of want to share the whole thing, which is that Somerville is a great place to invest in. And a lot of people don't realize this, but I mean, the numbers have gone up so much and a lot of people say, 
oh, they're gonna stop. I personally don't believe that. It is a personal choice. I think as a long-term buy, meaning 10 plus years, it's a great place to buy from a real estate investing perspective. And just to give you some data, single family homes, 2012, average price point in Somerville was $500,000. In 2022, 10 years later, average price point was over $1.2 million. That means you make $700,000 on your average single family home over that span. That's an incredible amount of money for anyone. Condos, not that much different. Condos 10 years ago were averaging 400K. Today, they average just a hair under 875K. So that's another almost $500,000. It's a ton of money and it's life-changing money. And I have met many clients who were middle-class people, bought a long time ago, and now are in a very, very good situation. So I think that it's really important when you're buying to take this into account. I see a lot of clients who don't take this into account and then years later, they might try and sell and they're not getting the numbers they wanna get. So I think it's a really cool benefit of living in Somerville for the long term. You can enjoy all these cool parts of Somerville, but also get that nice little bonus happening in the background without you actually doing anything. And that brings me to my last thing I wish I knew in Somerville, which is this is a great place to live. I talk about this a lot in my videos, but it's really true. I really believe it. I've been around here and in the area for a long time because it's so cool and constantly changing in many good ways. Just to quickly go over some of the things I love. Excellent food, excellent food variety, excellent grocery food variety, whatever you want. There's an awesome art scene. There's great live music. There's great comedy. There's cool art shows. There's people from all walks of life. This is one of my favorite things about Somerville. You have working class people in parts of Somerville. You have old school Somerville. Their family's been here for 50, 60, 70 plus years. I know a lot of them. If you're watching this video, you probably, we've talked to each other. There's young professionals who are here. There's a lot of young professionals. There are students from all kinds of universities doing all kinds of interesting things. I meet all kinds of really cool people here. And a lot of other interesting people from across the country, across, across the globe. I met so many cool people here. And there's a lot of parts of the country that I travel to and I meet cool people, but I find the sections of types of people you can meet here is just so wide. And that's a very, very unique thing. So those are all things I wish I knew before I moved to Somerville. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please take a second. Please like and subscribe this video. Shoot a comment below. If you have something that you wish you knew before you moved to Somerville that you now know. If you have questions for me, call me, text me, book a 15 minute meeting on my Calendly link, which is also in the description below. And that's it for today. Bye guys.